become a general of mighty armies at the Kings of Warhub. Take command of elves, dwarves, and orcs in this game of massed fantasy combat on beastofwar.com. Twisted aliens and demented cultists battle across the devastating science fiction world of Dark Age. Muster your forces and learn to survive at beastsofwar.com. Hello everybody, I'm back again with Constantinos and Stavros from Parabellum, and now we're going to be talking the future of Conquest. Oh, this is the exciting one. Yeah. This is the <laughs> exciting one, because so far it has been tons of background, tons of looks into the worlds, the factions. I'm curious to see what the future holds for this game. Well, so. you say the exciting, I say the mystery one. Yeah. <laughs> mystery? Oh, okay, video over. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> yes, that was it. <laughs> No, there are a lot of things uh, planned. There are a lot of things fleshed out already. I mean, we the amount of factions that we already have planned and uh, structured mm -hmm. in the world and in the way that the world uh, story will evolve mm -hmm. is way beyond the four initial yeah. ones that we've discussed so far. Yeah, I always think you need at least, at least four to get people interested mm -hmm. because if it's a 2v2, well, I mean, let's say I have a group of three, four friends, one one person or two people are having the same faction, but having that that nice minimum four is great because it gives yeah. you four very different playstyles, four very very different backstories that people can explore and get into. It's something that we've worked very hard to achieve. We're mm. hoping we we're hoping to release uh, within the first year mm. to have the four factions out in the first year of release, mm -hmm. and um, we're working very hard. Uh, <laughs> our poor sculptors, we're working very hard. <laughs> Um, to uh, to get the the miniatures mm -hmm. ready, yes. Um, to be able to to keep the release schedule that we've got in mind, it's 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 an insane release schedule. Mm. To exactly because we, we acknowledge that most people, this is a social game. You know, there's many players. They don't want to play the same faction. They want something mm. that speaks to them. Yeah. And you need to create that critical mass. You also need each faction to be fleshed out. Yes. Um, we're putting a lot of effort into dual kits mm -hmm. uh, that allow you to make multiple types of troops out of one box. Fantastic idea. Um, but they're also hellishly difficult to make. <laughs> um, the technical, the, the technical, uh, the technical thought that has to go into them beforehand is. Oh, well, I've I've had talks with a few companies that have been working through that. Do we make it completely dynamic posed, single type miniature, or do we try and make something equally cool but make it modular? If you're trying to do something dynamic and modular, your your difficulty rating goes up exponentially. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. it's we've we've tried very hard to keep the art alive mm. in our work and not merely um, reduce it to a sort of an engineering problem and mm. have a close engineering approximation of our art. Mm -hmm. um, of course, this puts tremendous strain on our sculptors who are required yes. to think as engineers as well. Yes. Um, so we, we are happy with the results and we hope that they will be too. Mm -hmm. um, our, our sculpting department has grown explosively mm -hmm. um, and uh, we like what's coming and we like the release schedule. We're, we're, we're liking where we are. Now right that now. insanity he's talking about yes. is not only technical. It goes also into the writing because uh, the way we see it, um, when you get into a faction, you get into its story. It's mm -hmm. part of what you're getting. Mm -hmm. So the same amount of detail and story that we've uh, already brought forward with the four, uh, the first four factions, we want the same for each faction. That is fantastic. We, it is also a lot of work. It is beautiful work, yeah. <laughs> but but it is a lot of work. And I, I've we've we've decided early on that I think I've mentioned this before that we don't want war to be a necessity for the game mm. we want it to be natural mm -hmm. which means that the way we introduce the factions would will make historical sense as well yes that is something we want to achieve mm. so yes the the spark mm -hmm. happens between the hundred kingdoms and the spires now there are a lot of vultures around each of those two <laughs> so the moment they see their attention mm -hmm. somewhere focused somewhere else yeah they will wake up and we've talked about the duagom now I think it was Stavros's expression where he said, yeah, but when the drums of war start echoing, they are the first to answer. Yeah. We want that natural feel for every one of the factions that we're bringing out. Mm -hmm. So we want the story to, and the world to move, to, to, to progress 
naturally and yes. in a way that makes sense, mm -hmm. historical sense. Well, th this is the thing. We've talked a lot of history, but there are other factions out there, and they need to exist from whatever period they began or whatever they've worked through, that the other factions have been there at the same time. So I'm sure there are probably times when you guys have been biting your lip going, no, don't say that. <laughs> don't say that. <laughs> that is actually true. Yeah. <laughs> that is actually true. And one of the scary, <laughs> one of the most difficult things is, obviously you can't think of everything in one go, mm -hmm. right? You you think of the core of your project, right? And you write it out and it's beautiful. It's, it's beautifully organized. And then you realize, okay, but this is only six factions. Yes. I need more. Yes. Um, so right now, after and but every time you write a faction, it either has to be isolated enough that makes it easy. Yeah. But then it doesn't really interact with the rest of the world enough, mm -hmm. and it, they, they they feel like an afterthought. Yes. Yeah. So you have to merge them in. So that means that every time you add a new faction, you mm -hmm. have to introduce it into everybody's backstory. Yeah. And that works fine the first six times, yes. and then in the seventh time when you're going back to six texts that you've written before. Yeah. It's tedious. Yeah. When you're at the 12th time <laughs> that you're doing this. Wait, you're thinking 12 times of doing this? Um, we've already done it. Um, oh, <laughs> <all times. okay. laughs> um, we're thinking 18. <laughs> yeah. um, okay. we're, um, yeah. We've put a lot of effort. Mm. The bones of the story are incredibly mm. solid. Yes. Um, we have a lot of factions to mm. explore. We've created room for them in the world. We've made sure that we don't need to re any retro continuity Got aspects you. for them. Mm -hmm. um, they're all introduced. Everybody's mentioned in everybody's history. There's realistic interactions okay. uh, based on society, um, mm -hmm. their geographical position, yeah. and, you know, a lot of the fantasy staples that you expect, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. Oh, no, these I, guys always fight those guys. What now? They're chum? Yeah, that doesn't work. No. They, they can't be chum. No. And there Honestly, are factions that are actually isolationist yeah. because that is what is expected from yeah. some factions. Yeah. But again, we made this in, or we tried to mm. make it in a way that makes sense. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to see your office. I just imagine you know bits of paper stuck to the walls with red string stringing this to that to that to that to that to that to that. <laughs> It, it's even worse when it happens in here, not on a wall. <laughs> yeah. And he's trying to extract it and going, wait, what? But weren't those guys, oh yeah, but you, no, no, I changed this and now it fits. And he's like, did you write it down? I'm like, I have it somewhere in a piece of paper. <laughs> <laughs> See? Uh, it's, it's the struggle between the... the, 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 the. He, he, I remember a first interaction where he's sitting down and saying like, no, 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 this is beautiful backstory. Great. Where are we now, today? Yeah. I'm like, oh, we're here. Yes, but that's what you need to focus on before you... Flood them with details. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, For me, I love knowing the, the backstory and the motivations and the history of a faction before I really drop into them. Mm -hmm. Yes, but so, it's not always the way to structure it when you build it. Because so, you, let me put it this way, an architect, an architect makes a sketch of what you want it to be at the end. And then you start from the, the bottom. Yeah. But you want a shape of what you're trying to get into. Very true. Very true. Well, actually, first you need to buy the ground that you're putting on. Yeah. <laughs> that is true. That was not my job, thankfully. <laughs> <laughs> no, and thankfully that wasn't a job. That was honestly years upon years of reading. That is true. Mm -hmm. Fantasizing, that thinking. True. Yeah. Uh, this, uh, some of my earliest writing has gone into making this background, and its, its creation has stretched back, uh, I can even say decades. Um, really? Yeah. Uh, That's impressive. So there's... This, this is something I'm seeing a lot these days. People have worlds that are actually alive in the writer's brains and you know i mean like i'm sure there are probably characters that whenever you're thinking and writing a story you're just going and he did this and did this and did this and did this did i think of that or did the character do that yeah. Yeah. <laughs> actually i'm very strange in that way because uh my studies were military history mm. um so it's it's very different for me i look mm. at more the geopolitics situation geopolitical mm. situation mm. and how this would arise and how would this impact them and i tend not to focus on the characters at all ah, that's um, my job and everybody ah. and everybody looks at me and is like stop it you can't not have characters i'm like yeah but they're you know it's it's society at the moment that that creates the characters it's not the character that shapes society which is a huge debate in history actually <laughs> i would agree with you on that point i would very much agree with you because it's it's from the the societal background that a, a hero is forged mm, that mm. is true that is true so that that's very much my view but i understand mm. that you know you like your dude on the field and you yeah. want to customize him and he has to be a badass and i'm like yeah. yes that's true <laughs> and, and 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 cosadino is always like Favreau, yes You've got to let the guy, it can't all be politics, okay? There's got to be some, like, juice in there, some badass, and something like, you're right, you're right, you're right. Why do I get when, the feeling you love playing Endless Space? Hmm? 
<laughs> that has happened. Yes, <laughs> that has been known to happen. Some weekends have been known to vanish. Um, <laughs> okay, so, onward then. So onward, onwards then. What would you like to talk about first? I think we can say a few things about some of our future factions. Okay. Just, just some ideas. Yeah, some ideas. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, let's take a look at the world. That's a world, a lot of world to populate. Yes. Yeah. And it's not even all of it. We're looking at one continent of yeah. possibly more? Yes. Oh. Yes. Um, so let's go with, for example, the city-states. And I, there are a lot of uh, structures here that are going to remind most people of things they've seen in the world. Mm. Um, and if you look down to the south, you, you start thinking, ah, Mediterranean, I mm. can see... I, uh, if you're familiar with the area, for example, that that becomes very, very iconic. It, it's hard to tell, but it's a, a ring around the caldera, and it's it's very iconic of the island of Sandorinian. Mm -hmm. This is the uh, the city states peninsula. Uh -huh. um, so uh, we mentioned it when we were discussing the hundred kingdoms. Yeah. So this whole southern bay on the left, yeah. Yes, this whole area here, uh -huh. up to here. These are the Alerian plains. We'll go into those in a little bit. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, this entire region is populated by the city-states. Mm -hmm. Unlike the Hundred Kingdoms, they are not refugees. Mm. Um, when the Old Dominion was collapsing, mm. s two individuals um, saw what was coming. Mm. Um, two mortals, uh, mm. two gods were also aware, and they, they, their efforts are what led to the Hundred Kingdoms. Mm. But these individuals, it's their efforts that led to the city-states. Mm -hmm. And their logic was, let's try to preserve Mm -hmm. some aspect of humanity from whatever calamity is coming. Yeah. So they created, they, as the society was collapsing around them, they gathered, copied the text to ensure that they wouldn't be lost mm -hmm. and slowly and subtly send um, expeditions mm -hmm. out that founded these city-states on the um, on these philosophical ideals that mm -hmm. they had that we based on uh, Plato's Republic, mm -hmm. actually. Um, so you've got these old-style Hellenistic city-states. Mm -hmm. um, but they are very, very strange in the way that they actually operate. Um, what? Uh, here we go. Oh. Yeah, I think I can show yeah. some Ooh. concept. So you can see this is very, you look at it and you immediately think, okay, this is the Acropolis, the way it originally <laughs> was, drawn, decorated, and the caryatids. But then you pay more attention and you suddenly realize that that's not a temple um, to a particular god, it's it's actually a temple of knowledge. It's a it's a uh, it's a university. Yeah, is that an observatory up top? Yes, yes. I can just about see the lens there. Uh -huh. So cool. <laughs> so um, the notion is that because they were funded by um, the universities mm. of the 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 academies of the old dominion, mm. these are all centered around the notion of the philosopher king, the guardian case, and the menials beneath them. That mm. was Plato's ideal republic. Yes. Unfortunately, this conception is flawed. Um, and it's flawed, again, unfortunately, because of that very human trait, arrogance. Mm. Um, the man who imagined all of this thought he, obviously, would be the best um, philosopher king. Mm. But there's only one of him. So he attempted to copy himself. <laughs> Using various eldritch forms. Okay. Um, and some unwilling test subjects. <laughs> um, what ends up happening is a very strange situation. I don't, I don't want to delve too much into it because, as I said, these are in the future and we're mm -hmm. still refining the finer details. Mm -hmm. But what you end up with is a very messed up city council, yes. let's say, um, all of whom believe that they're the ones in charge. Um, and the, the societal structure of these starts mm -hmm. degenerating very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, so you're going to have city-states that are that where, the, where the Guardian case has risen and taken control. Yep. Um, they're closer to, more reminiscent to modern day Sparta. Mm -hmm. Not modern day, sorry, ancient <laughs> Sparta. Um, and, ancient Sparta, okay. Yes. Um, and at the same time, you're going to have other societies that are uh, taken over by demagogues. Mm. Um, democracies where basically anybody who has enough popularity can sway the masses and can take them in the direction that they want. And mm -hmm. their armies are, they shy away from the standard hoplite companion cavalry mm. and um, the more traditional forms that you can see, and they're open to the subhumans and the dangerous word to use a subhuman, but the 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 half human servitor races that were uh. common in the old dominion yeah. that echo a lot of the forms of ancient mythology. So mm. the centaurs, the minotaurs, who were bred mm. for a particular purpose, um, these societies integrate them very very intensely. 
Mm -hmm. um, and then finally, you have um, the uh, the academic city states. This this represents one of them, mm -hmm. where um, science and technology are very powerful. Mm -hmm. And what you can't tell here because it's not focused. This is merely the temple of knowledge. Is it? I don't want to call it steampunkish, <laughs> but um, it's a society in which technology has taken root. Yeah. Um, so we're we're seeing what would have happened if we didn't have dark ages. In in a way. In a way. In a way. I think the a part of the idea was that the ancient Greek of this world, uh, uh, city states, mm. had reached a level of advancement beyond the world around them. Mm. What if that had continued uninterrupted? Mm. What if brilliant minds like Archimedes and still were allowed to and actually nurtured mm. to create more? Yeah. And they well, were given freedom and resources to research more. I actually did hear a thing recently. I'm not sure if it's true. If it's wrong, feel free to ridicule me mercilessly in the comments. But I did hear a thing that there were some Greek temples which actually had steam powered doors. I know there were hydraulic doors. Yes, that, that might have been what they were okay. on there then. Hydraulic doors. There, okay. But there was actually, the, uh, there, there, they do talk, there's this antikythera mechanism that people mm. keep on talking about. We don't know what it is. Mm. It's a complex mechanism. We don't know what it does. Some people claim it's a computer. Others claim it's something simple that broke down and looks complicated. <laughs> yes. Um, but there's a lot of room for the imagination to fill it in. Yes. We do know, though, that, that they use know. lenses to burn entire ships. That we do yeah, know. At least apocryphally. We, we've, yes. we've introduced a lot of these stories into, mm. uh, into the history yeah. here. And so the academic city-states are going to play around this. Like um, They're going to have strange steam-driven uh, implants for their soldiers, uh, large lenses on carts that will help them burn their, uh, their <laughs> opponents. And... Oh, the, the, the death ray? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah <laughs> in, in a way. Um, and they are the liquid fire. Yeah, there's a, the naphtha and the liquid fire, or the the Greek fire. So all of these are going to be centered around the academic. The mm -hmm. demagogues are going to use a little bit of both, mm -hmm. and the um, what we we'll call more the guardian city states. Mm -hmm. Those are going to be much more traditional hoplite mm -hmm. uh, formations with elite soldiers that depend on a frontal impact with their opponent. Mm -hmm. um, this different approach in different kind of city states also gives room to explore the uh, the wide pantheon that mm -hmm. actual ancient Greek had and approach it in different ways again with a twist as we always struggle. oh and, and, and this is one of the more twisted twists that we have yeah, that, is, that is actually <laughs> it, true it does allow people to go as deep as they want to if they like the faction exactly, yeah, exactly. You so always... if you just if you like the, the the nice historical looking stuff go with it if you want to go a little bit crazier that's great and if you want to go full-on mad yeah go for it mm -hmm. again as, as we mentioned before the sub factions mm. uh, within each faction Stand are going to be fully yeah. fleshed out so that slowly everybody can say, I like this, I'm going to focus here and mm -hmm. take it uh, where I want it to go. Mm -hmm. Okay, who's next? Who's next? Um, I think we can show okay. this. But let's just mention that this is a very early concept that we have. Yes. Okay. It is not what we... We work on this. The idea is this, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, again, it's 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 early concept art mm -hmm. for um, what we call the tribes of Wadrum. Mm -hmm. They, um, I can show them. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, again. Ah, so it's it's very. I mean, it's it's very clear to see that. Okay, these are the orcs. <laughs> yeah, but it's a it's again a different take on the orcs. Normally, yeah. I imagine orc. It's big, hulking bruiser. This is very much more. Tribal human esque noble savage type armor. It was one of the early ideas that we played with. That actually. we explored with. Yeah. We went again, um it, it exists in a number of tropes. The um the orcs were created as a uh warrior race mm -hmm. by the spires. Mm -hmm. See it's very different to grow an army from scratch mm -hmm. and it's very different to breed one. Mm -hmm. Less resources go into breeding an army. Yes. Um on the Art other hand <laughs> Yeah, on the other hand, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, and there's a couple of very, uh, there's a lot of backstory um, with the orcs and how they actually uh, came to be. I shouldn't say orcs, apologies. It's very early on, in, it's very early in their development. And <laughs> their name hasn't stuck to my head. Yeah. So the Wadrun are, um, uh, they're actually led by one of their gods, for oh. lack of a better term. Um, one of four that survive in a curious echo of the four horsemen. 
Uh, um, curious. Yeah, curious. Funny how that worked out. <laughs> um, but the interesting bit, and maybe a large to a large degree, their luck is that they're led by conquest. Ah. Not by any of the other three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, the idea is, for example, that they're all, while those gods are dead, they're still worshipped and they're still understood. Um, because the, the orcs were created as a warrior race. Their physiology is designed for war. Yeah. Um, uh, they, so they, is their mentality. And which is, to a large degree, yeah. their mentality. Hyper-aggressive. Mm. But they resent this. You see, they want to rise above it. Ah. Because you, you, if you're a, if you're a, a slave race bred to be one way, the, the and the Duhom are an example, mm. you dislike this. Yeah. So unlike the Duhom who had an easy way out, um, well, easy. Uh, <laughs> yes. Ish. No. Uh, who had a way ish. out? Yeah. 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 Who, ish. Ish. But it was offered. To them. Yeah. It was yes. brought in their plates. Yes. Um, they are fighting their very nature mm. every time. So it's a, it's, it's a very complex interaction in their society where violence is incredibly prevalent, mm. but it is not embraced. Yes. Um, and um, you have uh, cults to each of these uh, great ancestors, uh, war, famine, um, death, and conquest. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the, the, the cult of conquest is the strongest, and it's the vision moving forward, trying to evolve past yes. what we are. Yes. But war, death, and famine are very strong, except they've been subverted in a much more constructive way. Mm. Um, war, for example, is focused on uh, the priests have dual roles. The, 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 the adherents mm. have dual roles. So, yes, they're the heaviest armored and the most uh, impregnable of the Wadrun, but they're also the smiths and the blacksmiths and the creators. They all have a creative aspect to them. Oh. Um, death are terrifying um, blade masters, mm -hmm. but they're also the, uh, they're also the surgeons. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, and uh, finally you've got famine who are the crazy driven flagellants, unstoppable, their, their element is fire. Mm. Um, but they're also the lore keepers of mm. their people. So every one of these negative Im impulses has been harnessed, mm. um, to try to move away from that violent that has been bred into them because they resent this mm -hmm. and, um, and conquest in conquest. He is the last he's vision. Mm. Um, and he's the vision that has turned these aspects of orcs into some of the Wadrun into something more constructive. Uh, but the the Wadrun conquest cult. I'm curious. Oh no, he's very much alive, and he's very <laughs> much the leader of his people. All yes. oh, right, so there's a cult of conquest, but they're they're not like the other cults of the. Oh, they the are. They, no, no, they are very much like him. It's just that his is more prevalent because uh -huh. he can show up and punch you in the face. Yes. So, <laughs> yeah, the, the Wadrun that are part of that cult. What are their their two aspects? Oh, their two aspects. They only have one. Oh. And they are they are the visionaries, and they combine a little bit it. of all the others. Again, the notion of balance Got um, and how balance is how this moves forward. Mm. Um, so, uh, in 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 game terms, they are uh, sort of uh, what's it called the uh, jack of all trades, but master of none. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, it's it's a complex lore. Um, it, it encapsulates the deep. Aggression that is necessary whenever your concept when, whenever you think of orcs. I mean they can't be cuddly and mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it just it can't happen, but again We've tried to take it somewhere where they're instantly identifiable But they have a place in the world that we have generated that they are completely ours and mm. Spread well within the world. Their very existence links into the spire uh, society today and how Let's keep absolute control over mm. what we make, yeah. Because I, after sure that, yes, failure. after that failure, <laughs> let's keep absolute control of. So yeah. they they seem kind of when you look at them, they look kind of primitive. They look kind of distant from everyone else, and yet they again they they are placed in such a way that interacts with the story and influences mm. other people. And that actually, at this time, it actually pretty much mm. is going on because. Yeah. It's yeah. Oh, here. they're in the wastelands. Here the, in yes. the wastelands, exactly. Because this, the, the spire that created them was in that part. Yeah. And the largest settlement that they have is around that spire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Broken and shattered now. And that's why you can see in the wastelands these, these sp spots of deep green. Ah. That's where a spire fell was broken and its mm -hmm. biomass was released into the environment. So these are like uh, in the middle of the desert, these fantastic tropical oasis. wonderland oases. Yeah. But mm -hmm. they're. 
they're much more than just an oasis. Mm. And the very curious thing is that the spires have been here for many, 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 many years, <laughs> much more yes. than we're used to thinking in fantasy. Um, they have been keeping specimens for a long time, uh -huh. right? Well, apparently some of those specimens were kept for a long time because mm. they're released at the same time as the orcs are when the spires mm. break. Is that this at the very front of the image? Is that a fence that's been repurposed? Yes, because um, if if again, if you look at their art uh, at the, at the map, mm. the uh, the waste the wastelands uh, are very close to what used to be the heart of the old dominion. Mm -hmm. So they are the orc the sorry the wadrun <laughs> grew around. Uh, it's it's difficult. It's more difficult than you'd imagine. Uh, the wadrun. Well, he managed it. <laughs> oh, he's but much better at this <laughs> than I am. Um, They've been scavenging for a long time, yes. and they've been learning from the from what they've encountered. Yeah. They've been but they, incorporating they, they, it into themselves. That is also part of the uh, of the reason how they were created in such a way. They they let me put it this way: they were not meant to have ingenuity and stuff like that. They are scavengers. That's what they do. That's mm. how they know how to survive because that's what you do in war. Mm. You don't have you don't make beautiful structures and you don't yeah. advance medicine or yeah i don't i i'm not gonna bake a loaf of bread there might be one on that bag though mm -hmm. it's it's pretty much, i need a structure no i can carry this which is rubble and just put it there yeah. and it, it it's good enough yeah, yeah. it works but that is the challenge to that of course which is the attempt to create one's own culture one's own society beyond yeah. just this yeah. very cool i mean like, i i love the idea that they don't look like mindless savages which mm -hmm. is what is the biggest trope of an orc I am big, I am dumb, I'm a hit stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and one of the things that we've worked on, for example, um, there is the hyperaggression that's been mm. built into them. Then there's also the fact that, for example, one of the distinguishing traits uh, of the Wadrun will be um, they have a tremendous hearing. Mm. Um, they can hear well past the human range. Um, so they very, and they very seldom, when they're talking in their... Mm -hmm native tongue, we wouldn't probably wouldn't even hear it or understand it, or there would be so much more tonality to it. Yeah. But when they speak a more human tongue, one that is heard by normal ears, it sounds flat and uninflected because they have to reduce their tonality into just one range, and this makes them sound dumb. <laughs> but they're okay. not. They, yeah. they are merely containing it to that role. Yeah. Another thing that they have, again, because... Can I just... Oh, sorry. That for you? So, no, just on what you said. I had this... Because I played a role a lot with, it helps me build a world better when I actually write a piece about, all right, let's have a scene, a specific scene, so I can get the field better. Mm -hmm. So I have this scene in my mind that there's a Hundred Kingdom army and a Vadrun army, and there's the commander of the Hundred Kingdoms talking and talking for the land, for these savages are come to our land, and they will do, and everybody's cheering, ah! and then the Vadrun commander goes, they speak too much, silence them. <laughs> that is it <laughs> that is his inspirational quote and for me that gave me a feel of how they mm. they are very effective in their own primal i won't say savage but primal way mm. and uh one of the ways that we want to represent this is you know you have the activation deck mm -hmm. the orcs uh, sorry the wadron oh my god this is terrible <laughs> um they are going to be able to do away they do they will not have an activation deck um, they're they're capable of issuing commands across the entire battlefield. They're in total control of what the situation is, so they activate from a play from a set of hands. Mm -hmm. the, the, the all of the cards are in their hand, mm -hmm. and they can choose when to activate what. That's going to be interesting. That's going to be a very different interaction. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, on the other hand, they are uh, one of the things that. Uh, they also have is uh, when we're going over the traits and why people think of them as dim-witted and savages. Mm -hmm. Uh, because of the fact that they're trained to be, uh, that they were bred to be warriors, um, their calorific intake is fantastic. It's tremendous. They need to eat continuously. Mm. Um, and this is one of the biggest limits on their society because so much of the time and effort is devoted hunter gatherers, uh, hunter -gatherers, gatherers in a very, very limited um, area. area. Yeah. So uh, it's, it, it creates a very ruthless competition where only the, the strongest survive and limited resources. So it's, it's a very lean society. Yeah. Interestingly enough, that area is, well... Yeah, well, we'll, we'll get into that in a second. <laughs> but so when they actually make it over the, the, the Klaustrian Mountains, mm. um, they, they're willing to eat anything. Mm -hmm. 
So they'll eat bark, they'll eat things that humans find repugnant, which again makes them look like savages. Mm. But that's because they can actually process them. Yeah. And they don't care about the flavor. They don't care if it's 10 days old. Yeah. Their body can process it. Yeah, th this has energy for me. I will eat. I will yeah. eat. Exactly. But all of these things added up together mm. makes them look like dumb brutes when in fact they are not. Mm -hmm. They are raw, mm -hmm. yes, but they're not your dumb brutes mm -hmm. that we smash. Yeah, this is, this is something I really like about them is that they are not that, which is very cool. Mm -hmm. Right, anybody else? Now, these, these tribes are actually now pressing against the mountains for the first time. Mm -hmm. And considering they are a warrior race mm -hmm. in, in many senses, because yes, they have this limits in their civilization, but they are very good warriors. It's what they were bred to, to be. And they are pressing, and the feeling is that they are being pressed to press. Oh. Yeah. And so if they're moving towards the west, west yeah. there's something in the east that's in pressing the east that's pushing against them. Eek. I okay. will just say that, again, that is where a, a god fell and a civilization died out. Mm. That is all I, I will say right now. I don't know, keep... Keep the secrets, keep keep everybody waiting. <laughs> uh, you can tell me off camera. Oh wait, no, you won't. <laughs> um, uh, well, I can tease further by saying we've mentioned something on that. Oh. Uh, on uh, one of our Facebook posts at some point. Okay. Mm -hmm. are, feel free to go through them and... Okay, okay. <laughs> hmm. Um... Then uh, there's uh, there's other there's two other factions that we've mentioned that are a staple, mm -hmm. um, the weavers, the weaver courts, and uh, the we call them the quiet. Um, they are the two. They are the two. They're the castes that split away from the exiles, the spires. Yes. Um, and the weavers are the artis the artisan and religious castes mm -hmm. that broke away. And their vision was that this planet is a gift. We must treasure it, safeguard it. This is not a staging ground to go retake our planet. We made a hideous mistake in the past. Yes. Let's not repeat it. Let's take care. Mm. Um, and they are what most people would closely associate, it, associate with wood elves. Mm. But they're, cut, they're from another planet. Yeah. <laughs> they're not from here. So their notion of let's take care of this is not quite what we'd imagine. Um, okay. Don't forget that the original form of biomancy was called life binding. Life binding. Mm -hmm. So what their okay, vision that's, of that's just putting images in my head. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. I'll, I'll let you talk. <laughs> so the vision, uh, the vision for them is they have a very specific vision for what the ideal form of this world is, mm -hmm. and they're working towards that end. Um, and you can see they're they're geographically rather isolated, mm -hmm. with a rather large forest around. Them. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's not just a forest, it's an entire uh, living biome that they have created, nurtured, and very adeptly controlled. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. okay. If I may, uh, it is the reason why the humans call them weavers, because notice that in the exiles we use the names that the humans give them. Yes. It's the spires. Why? Because look at it. It's a, it's spire. a spire. Yeah. Mm. It's the weavers. Why? Because, well, look at it. It weaves everything. Look at If yeah. we go with our merchant ships near the shores, we see something that tells us that this is a tapestry of sorts. Yeah. And the quiet, well, I think we can elaborate just a little more uh, later. But the idea was that these civilizations, each with its own take, Mm. are so different from what you, me, Stavros, whoever, mm. can really get their, into their mentality. There's a limit. If nothing else, because there's life binding or biomancy. So their communication could be on a very different level that we understand. Mm. So we only, we are kind of forced ourselves to only use the human take on them. Mm -hmm. So it's... Otherwise, if, if we spoke from their point of view, it, they essentially it, become human. Yeah, Don't because they, it's... I'm using human methods to describe them. Yes. I'm human yes. words. Yes. So we're reserving most of the description of the spires, the quiet, and the weavers. Um, as the observations from humans? As the observations yeah. from humans. Gotcha. It's, it's definitely a clever way to do it, because it, it keeps that mystique and mystery to mm -hmm. the faction, which is something that is definitely something to cherish. There's yeah. that, and for me it's also the fact that I can't understand them. Mm -hmm. Not fully. Even... We who, you know, create them and shape them, we can't fully go into their mentality. Mm. 
they come from another planet with different problems, with different communication methods, with different everything, with a different understanding of life. Mm. Let me put it simply, they might l see into the ultraviolet. Mm. Just saying, I, I, I don't, as far as I know. <laughs> but, yeah, but, but you know what I mean. Yeah, but you would have, have no way to know that yeah. because it, it's a completely alien And how that would change your society. Yes. Um, so uh, the weavers, they have four courts. Mm -hmm. um, and now we're, we're going, again, once more close into the tropes where they've got summer, winter, uh, spring and autumn, mm -hmm. very closely associated with the Fae in most uh, fantasy. Mm -hmm. um, and what we've tried to do is give it a, a different take. Mm -hmm. um, and so summer and winter courts are creation and destruction aspected as well. Yeah. The other two courts are balanced, so they're more of this world. One is um, the spring court is, an, is animalistic, life binds to animals. Um, the, um, the autumn court is more of, you know, there's a strange word, it's it, it, plant, uh, flora, flora, there we yeah. go, yeah. um, the life bind to, uh, um, to plants, trees, um, Fungi. very, uh, Fungi. as well, <laughs> a very different take on their society. And then you have the winter and summer courts, mm. um, and they've bound to these little primordial shards we mentioned that mm. were before, um. And so what you end up is with a very, a society of, of extremes woven into a, into a harmonious whole mm. in a way that no human would think that, oh, that makes sense. Mm. You've got four incredibly disparate things working together mm. um, with their clashes and their disagreements. Of course. <laughs> um, but what you end up with is a visually very striking range of, uh, mm. of, uh, of images. I'm curious to see what you And because of their efforts to connect with this world, they are actually the ones that have a very limited, but they have some communication with some humans that mm. they find a little like-minded, mm. very mm. little. Mm. <laughs> but there is some communication there. Okay. Possibly some trade, which is why they know a bit more about this world and the Hundred Kingdoms, for instance, know a little more about them than the Spires. Well, I suppose if someone came to the, the Summer Court with a, a completely unknown specimen of plant life from, like, way across the continent, surely they'd want that. It's it's be, yeah. So we've, uh, they're slowly um, going to come in. One of the things that we're working very hard on is as a, um, as a race is introduced, mm -hmm. the story moves to explain why they're coming in. Mm -hmm. So the Orcs are being pushed in. Room. Ah, thank you. <laughs> um, this will happen. There is conflict rising with the city states and mm. uh, over resources on the Alerian Plain. Mm. Um, the Alerian Plain was always a disputed area. Okay. Now there are times where this peaks. There are times where this is more subtle. Well, we're heading to another peak. Yeah. <laughs> another peak. Okay. Um, and uh, finally. What we see here is one continent, um, there are others. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, humanity was quite, oh, what's it called, expansive. Mm. So these don't represent the only bastions of human power in the world. Uh, okay. So we're working hard at bringing in um, other tropes. We don't want to reveal too much, but you know. That's the, okay. the, the mind travels to certain societies, certain very advanced societies that were developed outside of Europe and a more Western mm -hmm. approach, um, and how they would interact and how we've woven them into this world mm. creates some interesting uh, dynamics. Mm. Um, and again, we've drawn very heavily on the history, um, t swapped it around, and uh, we've come up with some very clever ways of integrating them mm. into what is essentially a large... Um, into a what is essentially a large yet contained mm. uh, s uh, continent. It's a, it's a functioning geopolitical map. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, we have to introduce new new players, and there's limited ways to do that. And we've we've come up with some very very well. We hope. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we hope. We, we hope. We, we think, but let's... we think we're very clever about <laughs> yeah. it, and we hope you agree with us. <laughs> That's um, pretty much it. <laughs> so yeah, no, but the... that interaction part is not going to happen just through us. Mm. No, that's something. That's something actually that's very challenging and also very interesting that we, early on, we decided that we want lore and the story to be part of the game the way it is reflected in the, in the mechanism and the system of the game as well. We want the 
because let me put it simply the player gets a product and it's part of the product yeah this, the story is for well that's my job <laughs> but <laughs> the story is part of oh, the yeah. product and we want the player to have the option yeah. it's not a necessity but we want them to have the option to interact and to be part of that story mm. uh, uh, that we're making so we are having quite a few ideas on that front now that's Maybe we're a bit optimistic about some of them. We're optimistic <laughs> because, I mean, we want, uh, obviously, when we um, we can't start a tournament uh, or competitive play scene mm. with just two factions released. But once we have four factions and we've managed to flesh them out, we we are already designing the, um, the organized play website where mm -hmm. people will be able to log in, mm -hmm. uh, create tournaments. And one of the things that we definitely intend to do is as the world, as the story of our world progresses, mm -hmm. as new factions come in and different um, different balances are addressed yeah players are going to be able to actually affect uh, the background mm -hmm. this is a very delicate balance because of course it can be very disruptive to a story that we had in mind yes so we can't give absolute freedom yes. but we can say among three choices that we find aesthetically pleasing yes you know go play ahead. it out yeah. play, play it, it out, out. Yeah. whichever it out. one you want can win yeah that could um, be very interesting and we're hoping to be able to do this either through campaigns mm -hmm. or through um, tournaments. Yes. Um, there, there have been some very interesting, uh, great successes and mm -hmm. some, some failures in this regard uh, in the industry as a whole, and we hope to have learned from them. Well, the, the one thing I've noticed with, uh, with this in particular, so a tournament is excellent for a, a small, sharp transition within the game. Mm -hmm. So say you want uh, a spire to be wiped off the map. Having a campaign built around that, perfect. If you want something a little deeper, a little more sweeping, your campaign like weekends and stuff are far more effective that for that because you have a, a greater source sample to actually draw the narrative out from. Mm -hmm. But that that's just what I've seen. Maybe everybody in the comments will completely disagree with me. <laughs> um, at the same time... Um, Oh, oh yeah, yeah, we're going. Like yeah, it. yeah, it's, nice. it's, nice. it's pretty. <laughs> um, uh, also, we are working very hard on the on the background. Mm -hmm. um, we've uh, we've built the background as if it were for a role playing game. Uh, the lore as yes. if it were for a role playing game, which we've we've actually been approached. Um, Have you know by mm -hmm. parties? Have you know about the possibility of converting it um, into one? And I have to admit it; it was always. A dream mm -hmm. and that that might be the case and it was always created to those uh, standards mm -hmm. um, and we're looking forward to be able to do that in, in the future we want to focus right now we want to retain our focus until release yeah and but, bringing a, a war game worthy of playing yeah yes yeah. so, yes definitely um, and something we've been asked a lot was regarding army books whether we intend to release army books yes um, for our factions and um, I'd love to mm -hmm. But because we're a young company and we have to husband our resources, we, yes. uh, an army book is very challenging from a logistics uh, point of view, where I come out with the army book and I have to come out with all the units at the same time. And yes. it is, it's, a, it's a tremendous strain on resources and it, I have to make sure everybody receives something new yes. every t two or three months, something for his faction. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's beautiful when your faction gets a ton of goodies for six to eight months, mm -hmm. but we have to shift the schedule around in such a way that makes us very impractical. Mm -hmm. Now, what we are thinking of doing is in the, um, in the near future, again, once we've got the release under our belt, to switch to either collector's items mm -hmm. or print-on-demand uh, yeah. army books for those that really want you know, all, of their, um, all of their lore and all of their um, uh, activation card entries in yes. one clever location, in one location, it's going to be beautiful. Um, yeah, you've seen our artists. I, they, they, they wouldn't yes, let they, me. They, they, <laughs> they go nuts. The, the army books, however, I always find I went after them to actually get the feel and flavor of a unit mm -hmm. more than actually just running hard stat lines. Well, on that regard, we, we, we want to get the story out there. We yes. want people to have access to it. The, the site is built in such a way, when it goes live, you will see that it's built in such a way that we will give you insight into every warband that we have, mm -hmm. every type of unit, every mm -hmm. faction and sub-faction. We want the story to be accessible. Yes. We want the, those interested to be able to see every 
angle of that story. And mm. what we've discussed here is actually, let me put it this way, it's discussing what we call the tier one, okay. more or less. Maybe some tier two, which is faction and sub-faction. Yes. There is, there are individual stories to be told, mm. and we intend to gradually release them. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are thinking of multiple ways of doing that online, at least some of them, whether through short stories or uh, wiki pages. We will we will look into that and well, take it see what happens. Yeah, yeah, and see what happens. See what people respond to and what they like. Yes. Yeah. Um, because uh, again, I mean, a lot of people say it. We're, we're actually going to try to hold to it that we want to see what it is that people like. We want yeah. to. I mean, obviously, every creator has something inside him, and he wants to put it out there for people to see. Um, I'm already putting down, you know, plot lines for, for <laughs> novels. I'm just, it's not a focus right now. It's not, but if, if, I'm just if, putting if, them If out. you do, yeah. I will be first in line. You've got me curious <laughs> for this game to actually see what stories you would tell. Also, it means that you can move away from the geopolitics, and I should yes, your heroes Yes, <laughs> Here's the thing. Uh, the way I'm thinking, because this is a very geopolitical game in yes. many respects, the way we've approached the factions is such. I want to explore that through different POVs, through different points of view. Mm. Now, we, as I said, I, I've, I think I've mentioned again and again that we wanted to be realistic. We wanted to be mature. That is not always through the, let's say, the hero. Mm. That is more often than not, it is the poor man at arms right there. <laughs> yeah. Now, he, I know that he is expendable. I know that he, but that, for me, gives more the feeling mm. of war. Yes. And this is a war game. There, of there, course, there are characters. Hmm. But there, there are some stories that I've seen told over the years from that viewpoint of the Lion Grunt. Now, mm-hmm. you know he's probably going to be the one who survives <laughs> because plot armor. Yes. Uh, oh, really? You think uh, they're killing him halfway through the book and bringing in a new guy? I'm not going to say any names, but one of the most known series of fantasy books out right now mm. starts with a chapter that explores five different characters and kills them off in the first chapter. Actually, fair point. I forgot about that. <laughs> I did forget about what that. I, what I mean to say is that, of course, there are going to be characters mm. that lead the story because yes. that is how a world works. I mean, when we yes. talk about the Napoleon times, we call them the Napoleon times. <laughs> it's, of all things, of you know, all things. You know yeah. what I mean. You know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. It's when, I, when we talk about Rome, we're thinking Caesar. Yeah, a two Bruti. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Uh, of course, there are those characters there. Yes. But, and we will explore those. Yes. They will have interesting stories to tell, and we want to tell them. Mm-hmm. But there's also the other side. And that other side gives more insight into what happens actually in the world. So we don't, it's, it's the, you know, you, don't, you focus so much on the tree that you lose the forest. Yes. And then you focus so much on the forest that the tree becomes insignificant. And it's a delicate balance in yeah. between. So I think that my tendency, I will freely admit this, is to forget about the tree and draw a beautiful forest. But what <laughs> we're trying to, what we are trying to do is to make sure that the forest is a beautiful background on which a tree can yeah. stand. Yeah. 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 Um without having one take away from the other. Yeah. Uh the saying we actually have over here is you can't see the wood for trees. Mm. <laughs> All right, uh is that everything? I think, I think so. that covers it I uh, think for so. now. Yeah. Well, I think that this is a good place to leave it for now. Well, you've you've got me curious. You have got me curious. Hopefully you have everybody out there curious as well. Uh, mm. As always, guys, get your comments in. The guys from Parabellum will be keeping an eye on the comments. If there is something very cool, if you have uh, you know, cool ideas or questions, get them in below. We'll move on. We'll see you another time. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now, and be sure to check out beastsofwar.com for the latest gaming news and gaming let's plays. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.